Hello everyone, how are you all doing? I do hope that you are all doing fine. I do pray that you are all safe and sound and that you are all healthy. And at the same time, please do take my advice to just stay at home and study all your lessons and drink lots of water. It's quite hot lately, so you need to be hydrated all the time, okay? So right now, we are already in the lesson 4 of our uh, class in Soxi Ad 11 and I'm just very much thankful that a lot of you are still watching my discussion for lesson 3 and if you, if you will just take a short recap on our discussion on lesson 3, we were able to talk about um, the, some important state principles as mentioned or as embodied in our Philippine Constitution and at the same time we were able to talk about citizenship so you are now I think quite knowledgeable on who are the citizens of the Philippines and how to acquire Philippine citizenship. So there were also some discussion on quite important uh, jurisprudence in our that is related to our uh, Philippine Constitution. We were able to talk about the Oposa versus Proctoran, which is talking about our right to a healthful and balanced ecology. And we were also able to talk about the case of Grace Po on her citizenship, which in that case, in that jurisprudence, the courts of the Philippines or the Supreme Court uh, was able to grant a Filipino citizenship to all the foundings and in fact foundings are considered as natural born Filipino citizens here in the Philippines so those uh, are very important landmark cases in our Philippine for our Philippine constitution so I do hope that you were able to take the notes in that discussion and also in this discussion we will be able to we will be talking about social justice and we will also be talking about our Bill of Rights. So these are also very important topics that will come out in your midterm examination. So you really need to study well for your midterm examination because in this examination, it will be time pressured. It's actually a way for you to be trained as early as now on taking a time pressured examination so that you will be quite acquainted with that once you take your board examinations after you graduate so it's very i think it's a very good training ground as early as now to be able to take a, a time pressure examination so with that let's start with our lecture so to begin with let's start discussing about social justice what is social justice so our supreme court have actually defined social justice in the case of Kalalang versus Williams. Social justice was actually defined as neither communism, nor atomism, nor anarchy, but the humanization of laws and the equalization of social and economic forces of the state, so that justice in its rational and objectively secular conception may be at least approximated. So I have highlighted humanization of laws and the equalization of social and economic forces because this is the most important phase in this definition as provided for in the case of Kalalang versus Williams. So social justice is actually a very broad concept under uh, our constitution because social justice must be included in all phases of national development. So when you say social justice, the, our government is actually required to protect and enhance the rights of the people, most especially in protecting human dignity, at the same time to be able to reduce social, political, and economic inequalities and to also remove uh, cultural inequalities. So basically under our law or under the concept of social justice, um, we have to think that uh, the government cannot uh, really provide equality in terms of wealth, equality among, uh, in terms of services to Filipino people, but rather it aims to provide equality as to opportunities. There must be equal opportunities in terms of services that is given to the government. There must be equality of political rights. So meaning when you say equality of political rights, as long as a person is able to um, uh, is able to qualify as a candidate for a certain for a certain position, then it doesn't matter if you are rich or poor. 
you are allowed to run and at the same time you are allowed to vote regardless if you are rich or poor and also under social justice there must be equality before the law so in the eyes of law walay pobre walay dato kung nakasala ka you must be punished kung kung ikaw po uh, was taken advantage of or nahilaptan then you must be protected under our laws regardless if you are rich or poor so that's the very concept of social justice there must be equality in terms of opportunities there must be equality in terms of uh, being able to avail of services equality in terms of protection under our law so basically under the our current situation during the pandemic when we talk about social justice, katuunta na tagano gayuda are not only the poor people, but rather everyone. Because kita man tana na wada ng trabaho during, during this pandemic. So somehow, in order to uphold social justice, everyone should have been uh, provided with, um, with the services or getting tabang from our government during that time. And you have to think that you must be deserving in order to invoke social justice. So although primarily social justice is for the poor, but you have to think na kanay mga pobre nga sige rag hantak, sige rag inum. I think they cannot invoke social justice if ever they feel like wa sila natabagan sa gobyerno because in the first place sila mismo wala gatabang sila kagalingon so for you to invoke social justice for you to provide it with this to be provided with this opportunities and with this services by the by our government you must also take your part in helping our government it's not all time nga magsaligra ka sinabang like for example for peace you deserve four piece. Kay kailangan mo siya kagtabang kasi your work is not enough. Pero once again, ka daw na kag four piece and di pa siya ka mo trabaho pag yun, magsalig ka sa four piece and makuha niyo ang four piece, mag-inom ra ka. <laughs> That's not a good practice. Dili siya maayo. And it's always frowned upon under our, under our law. That kind of practice is actually very frowned upon by our government, you don't deserve natabangan ka kay you are not helping yourself. So for you to be able to invoke um, social justice, for you to be able to invoke nga you deserve to be uh, to be provided with, with these opportunities and with these services by our government, then you yourself must be deserving. So yung nga na, in social justice, there must be equality. Um, kung suti ka mga dato, kay tungod, naningkamot ni sila. So, ikaw, pobre ka, paningkamot po. And I think the government is doing something para ka mo makabot on sa inyong ganahan because it's not all the time na ang government mo yung mag-provide para sa inyo. Ha? You have also need to work hard and to work hard and at the same time, you must also help yourself. Now we are here with our Bill of Rights. So before we begin or before we start discussing each provision under our, our Bill of Rights, we must understand the, uh, the purpose of our Bill of Rights. So under our laws, the Bill of Rights will actually serve as our sanctuary. It is our protection against all forms of abuses committed by our government in the exercise of their power. So once Gani, our government officials, our government and some government officials and some government employees will start to abuse their rights and we are directly affected by these rights, uh, by these powers once they try to abuse their powers and we are directly affected by these powers then we can always invoke uh, the bill of rights as our protection under the law so what are the kind of powers that we are talking about here so we're talking about the police power the power of eminent domain and the power of taxation so this uh this powers of the government are actually limited through the Bill of Rights because in order to stop corruption and in order to prevent any form of corruption or any form of abuses under our government, we must find sanctuary in the protection that is granted by our Bill of Rights. So that's why it's very important to uh, study them. 
So to start with the provisions under our Bill of Rights, let's start with Section 1. Section 1 states that no person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, nor shall any person be denied the equal protection of laws. First, we have to understand that the most important word here in Section 1 is actually due process. And what do you mean by due process? Under our law, it means a law that hears before it condemns. First, deprivation. Is deprivation allowed under our courts? Yes, of course. You can be deprived of your life, most especially in committing crimes with capital punishment. Before, we used to have that sentence for those committing um, murder, rape, and other capital offenses in, uh, in the revised penal code. And, you know, you can be deprived of your life you can be deprived of your liberty if you commit any crime. Or you can be um, deprived of your property in the exercise of uh, eminent domain, in the exercise of power of the eminent domain by our government. But the thing is, before you can be deprived of any of these things, you must be heard first. There must be due process of law. So, you must be able to air your side Dapat madunggan ka. You must be able to express your reasons as to why you were able to commit those things and what are the circumstances um, uh, during that time when you committed those kind of things. And it's only through that, before ka madungog, it's only through that that you can be deprived under our laws. And it's actually, and it's very main reason why there must be due process at all times. It is because to be able to prevent any forms of abuses by our government. Again, we are preventing abuses here. Kaya dili ka pwede nga daritso on na nakagpatay or you will be punished for a certain time that you may or may not have committed without being heard. Your innocence must be proved first or you must be your innocence or your guilt must be proved first before there is any deprivation. So that but the government must do something for you to be heard. So you will not be put under life. Uh, that sentence, you cannot deprive of your life without undergoing any trial for your case. You cannot of uh, liberty, di ka mapriso, unless you have done really something and you must be heard first. And for your property, I think if in the exercise of the powers of eminent domain by, their go by our government, there must be requisites first. Then those requisites must be exhausted first before there is proper taking of property. So there must be due process. Due process must be at all times be practiced so that there must be abuse of powers of the government. The government is not going to be able to do it. For example, in your LGU, you have a priest who is a mayor or anyone in the government or a police who is 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 That should not be allowed. Again, that should not be allowed. So you must be protected from any form of deprivation as long you must be protected from any form of deprivation. So munang, there must be a need for due process under our laws. Due process muagi sa saktong pamaagi. Muagi yung saktong um, there must be proper trial. There must be proper process in every step Para gyud mapatunayan or uh, there must uh, your innocence or your guilt must be proven first before there is proper deprivation of your life, liberty, or property. Ana ana simple. And I think I have already explained in your module what do you mean by life, liberty, or property. So that's it. Again, due process is very important. You must be heard first before you are condemned. There must You must be able to state your reasons and what are those circumstances involved in those times that you were able to commit those things before you can be uh, punished for a certain crime or there, before any kinds of deprivation from our government. So due process, that's very important.
So now let's proceed with Section 2. Section 2 provides that the right of people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures of whatever nature and for any purpose shall be inviolable, and no search warrant or warrant of arrest shall be issued except upon probable cause to be determined personally by the judge after examination under oath or affirmation of the complainant and the witnesses he may produce and particularly describing the place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized. So I don't need to explain this section any further because this is actually more useful to uh, police officers and those um, studying law. However, in your case, let's just um, have a brief, uh, in, uh, brief discussion on this. So you must just understand that under this, you must be secure from uh, your privacy, must be secure at all times, and that your home and all your possession must be secured too. So meaning, nobody is allowed to enter your house and enter your dwelling without a valid warrant of arrest. So kailangan dyan ng warrant of arrest. So walay that it's wrong sa yung balay ng mga police claiming that you have committed a crime. Whether you have committed or not, you, whether you have committed a crime or not, nobody is allowed to get inside your house without a valid warrant of arrest. That is because your, um, your home and your privacy must be protected at all times. It is inviolable. Violable. So this, your homes and your privacy must not be violated. So before any person can enter your house, like for example, a police claiming that you have committed a crime before or that they are um, accusing you of committing a crime and that they you have you are hiding any kinds of evidence inside your home. Before they can enter your house, they must first either bring a warrant of arrest or warrant a search warrant in your house because um, you can only be at your home your home or your privacy can only be violated unless these people who enters inside your home will have a valid warrant of arrest that is issued by a judge. So again, it's very important. Ayaw mo sugot. If you are accused of committing a crime, ayaw mo sugot na someone will just enter your house and take you. Wao na mo kalikipisohon mo without a valid warrant of arrest. Again, that's a form of abuse kung wala warrant of arrest. And this, um, police officers or these people claiming to be police officers, ng mga dakop kunuhay ninyo, are very much, um, are, are very much violating, are violating our constitution if ever they will take you away. So that's why pangita jud mo valid warrant of arrest or any wa search warrant na makapakita that a uh, search warrant and this warrant must be signed by a judge. Only a judge can issue a warrant of arrest or a search warrant and that's the only time na di mo ka-escape po. Oh, mo nila. However, if wala gani, don't let them get inside your house because again, your privacy as a person yourself is very important and that your home and your property and any form and any possession should not be violated inviolable sila so that is why valid warrant of arrest must be at all times carried by those people claiming you or those people who are claiming that you have committed a crime or any forms of uh, any for any any forms of crime So we are now here in section three of our Bill of Rights. So before uh, we proceed, let me just tell you that section two and section three are actually related to each other. And I will explain their relationship once we discuss the doctrine of the fruit of poisonous tree. So with section three, it provides First, the privacy of communication and correspondence shall be inviolable except upon lawful order of the court or when public safety and order requires otherwise as prescribed by law. And second, any evidence obtained in violation of this or the preceding section shall be inadmissible for any purpose of any proceeding. 
So you have to understand first, privacy of communication. Again, your communication or your correspondence with other persons is very important. So that's why di unta na magkilabot, magsamok-samok when you are talking to your uh, loved ones in your telephone. Makipagtawag ka, video calls, mo usuron, di ba, sa telephones, or in your emails, or in your letters, snail mail sa una, before. This kind of communications are very important because uh, you are must be protected of your privacy. This kind of communication at all times must be private and no one should be able to violate them. However, there are certain cases nga yeah, why tapping or someone will inter in intercept your letters or maminaw sa iyo, di ba, why tapping, maminaw sa iyo mga tawag. That's actually not allowed in court. And the thing is, namang iuba namang good that for example, you are suspected of a crime. And, you know, you're suspected of committing a crime. But the thing is, upon suspicion, wala pa gani court order, wala pa lawful order from the court, ilan nang gi-check, ilang gihilap ta ng inyong Facebook, gihilap ta ng inyong, you know, mga messages, mga chat ninyo sa, F, sa messenger. Or kung asa mo katawagay, maminaw sa iyong tawagay. That's actually not allowed because under our um, under our constitution, your privacy of communication and correspondence shall be inviolable. However, in cases where there's treason or espionage or you want to provoke war and disloyalty, or na piracy, or mutiny in the high seas, or rebellion, or you want to do something against the government, or you propose guy, you know, you are a known terrorist and you're proposing rebellion or any forms of terrorists in our government. Our courts can very much uh, issue a court order that would allow certain officials in our government or certain militaries to somehow look into your correspondence or your communication with other people. That's the only time that they can um, they can intrude your communication. So, masamok good in privacy and communication. And that's very much allowed as long as um, you pose danger or threat to our country. But if wala gani, you're just an ordinary person, nobody should, um, should uh, disturb your privacy in your communication. So, muna siya, under the second line, it states that any evidence obtained in violation of this or the preceding section shall be admissible for any purpose or in any proceeding. So it means ang kaning mga na, uh, mga nakuha ng evidence in section 2 um, ni suludra ni ng mga officials sa inyong balay without a uh, valid warrant of arrest. Gidakop mo without a valid warrant of arrest. And they will get something in your possession and wala gay siya warrant of arrest and they will use this possession that they have obtained from your home as an evidence against you or that um, kani pong sa private communication kwaan imong mga kwaon imong mga chat sa ubang tao ilang i screenshot di ba murag manghilabot sa ihak nila ang imong messenger and they will take screenshots on your um, chats with other person and this uh and what they're doing is without a lawful order or without a court order then they shall not be admissible in courts under the doctrine of the fruit of poisonous tree so again section 2 and section 3 of our bill of rights is uh is covered under the doctrine or it covers the doctrine of fruit of the poisonous tree. When you say doctrine of fruit of poisonous tree, so those evidences obtained from any person or from, from any person, um, those in illegal manner, so without lawful order from the court, shall not be admissible in any courts. Um, so again, any evidences obtained against you without any lawful order or these evidences are obtained through illegal means, they shall not be admissible to the courts and cannot be used against you.
So, muna siya very important thing to remember in section 2 and section 3. So, before sa busod siya yung balay, dakpun ka, and they will just get any evidence against you without a valid warrant of arrest, then na pwede. Or, they lang ilabdan ang imuhang uh, communication or correspondence to other person, i-wart up nila yung mga tawag, i-intercept nila yung mga mails, without lawful court order from the court, di po na pwede. Because these are obtained through illegal means and under the doctrine of fruit of poisonous tree, our courts cannot allow or cannot accept uh, this kind of evidence as obtained because it is through illegal means. Hence, wala as bearing in courts whenever you are in a trial. So again, this, um, if you have none, if you have noticed, this um, this provision, section 2 and section 3, are actually favorable for any persons who are accused of committing any crime. So again, it's also a form of protection of any person and a limitation of the police powers granted to the government. So again, in every movement, so in any um, movement of our police force or in our military, in order to get evidence against you, they must be lawful. There must be proper valid or there must be a valid warrant of arrest or there must be a lawful court order before uh, they can obtain any kinds of evidence that would be used against you in case you are accused of committing a crime. So again, it's very, very important that you uh, must know uh, how to um, you must know as to when uh, these provisions must be invoked, and that is when you are accused of committing a crime. So, this has been provided under our Constitution. Section 4. Section 4 is actually interesting. So, let's read. No law shall be passed abridging the freedom of speech, of expression, or of the press, or the right of the people to peaceably assemb assemble and petition the government for redress of grievances. So first, you have to understand that there are a lot of rights involved in Section 4. The first right is the freedom of speech, of expression, or of the press. So in this way, um, you are always allowed to express what you want to express. And you are, at the same time, by expressing it, you can use any form of any forms of media in order to publish your expression. You can always use Facebook. Current times, you can always use Facebook, or you can use TV, the television, you can use radio, or print, sa mga newspaper. You can always express your opinion, or your expression, or anything you want to say. But the thing is, your freedom of speech, or your opinion, although you are entitled to it, and you are entitled to publish this, um, this your speech that you have, or your opinion, or any expression that you have in any forms of media so that a pe more people will be able to hear what you want to, uh, what you are trying to express. Although you are very much free to do so, you are at the same time limited. So, for example, uh, censorship for immoral and ind indecent pictures. Or, you know, you're trying to, to call for sedition or imunda uton ang government or you want to do something against the government. Or at the same time, express kag slanderous or libelous words, magdaot kag other persons. That's the time that you can be um, uh, punished. You can, you can be liable of uh, for, um, committing any forms of crime. So that's why you have to think that once you express your opinion, you are very much free to do so. But you have to think, will it bring danger? Will it bring um, abuse? Or will it, will it incite any form of rebellion or any form of a distraction to our government? Or are your words expressing, are, are the words that you have expressed are quite sanderous or libelous against other, other person na nakadaot pa ka your speech. You have to be careful of that. Again, you are free, very much free to do so in expressing yourself in any forms of expression that you want through art, through painting, through writing. But you must also think that you have to consider that it's not all times that you are free. You have to think also that against the government 
Di siya makadaot against other persons. Or di siya makadaot against you. Munang that's why um, there's censorship in our television. So, kaning mga obscene, kaya sexy ra ka ayaw or sobrang mga abot ng mga hobo-hobo under our uh, in our television gina censor because we have the MTRCB to do that. That's form of censorship. But the thing is, it's very much allowed because your freedom of speech or freedom of expression or freedom of the press is not all times absolute. There, you have to consider certain laws. If in doing so, in doing your expression, in, do, in providing your opinion, or in in your speech, you are able to commit a crime already, then you are very much liable to it. But again, first, you have to understand that you are free to do, uh, you are free to give whatever kind of speech, you are free to express whatever you want to express, and the press is always free to you know, to report anything, any bad things that is happening in our country, any bad things that is being committed by our government officials, any forms of abuses, this can be reported to our press. However, once in the exercise of this right, you are committing a crime, you are already liable. So you have to be careful to it. Okay. And then, so um, other, uh, other rights that are included in Section 4 is the right of people to, uh, uh, to peaceably assemble and petition the government to redress their grievances. So this is actually related to um, to labor laws because this has been provided to uh, those uh, employees who, ha who are allowed to conduct lawful strike or to picket. And then say picket ka nang niya gani and then magso mag but mag mag of placards um, asking their employers to provide um, more compensation or better benefits to them. And these are actually lawful strikes or lawful picketing. And they are allowed under uh, Section 4 of our Bill of Rights. So again, uh, this is actually related to our labor laws. And I will not dwell on, on that much given that we have um, other lessons providing for uh, labor laws. So I will discuss it more at the lesson. But rather, again, uh, lawful strike, lawful picketing, a lawful expression of these employees you know, expressing uh, 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 or displaying any forms of, kind of rights that, or benefits that they are wanting for them, uh, that's very much allowed under Section 4. So again, you have to remember you have the freedom of speech, you have the freedom of expression, and, the free, and our press is very much free and our employees have so much uh, freedom. They are, free, they, are, they are given freedom to conduct lawful strikes and picketing, but they have to be careful in exercising these rights. As long as you're not committing any form of crime, then you will not be liable under our laws. So for section five, let me read, no law shall be made respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. The free exercise and exercise and enjoyment of religious profession and worship without discrimination or preference shall forever be allowed. No religious test shall be required in the exercise of civil or political rights. So we have to understand that there are actually three parts in section five. Section five. The first part is um, the non-establishment clause. The second part is the uh, the freedom of religion, and the third part is actually the no religious test clause. So for the first part, the non-establishment clause, you have to understand, or uh, the provision which uh, the first part it says that no law shall be made respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. So this is actually considered as the non-establishment clause. Why is that so? Because our government is mandated to not establish its own religion, meaning that our government must not create a religion. At the same time, it must not uh, create a law that would recognize certain religions, a single religion or certain religions in our government. And, and a third is that our government must not also pass laws that would stop or prohibit people from exercising their religious freedom. 
So what is required under our law or under this non-establishment clause is for our government to be neutral. So the people are free to exercise whatever religion, but the government must be neutral. And in fact, the government is not allowed to levy taxes from the people and that these taxes must be collected to support the government. So again, no money at, at all to support any forms of religion or any churches. So again, no money from the government must be used to support our or any forms of religion or any um, sex in our, any sect secta in our in our country. So meaning the government must be neutral and it must not uh, provide any legislation that would support or that would force people to believe a certain religion or that would stop people from believing any religion because um, under the second uh, part of this section the free exercise and enjoyment of religious profession and worship without discrimination or preference shall be forever allowed so meaning any person is allowed to believe any religion. They can believe in a single religion or believe in a lot of religion or don't believe in religion at all. That's what is allowed under the Constitution. You must be given religious freedom. You must be forced to believe other religions, but rather you are given the freedom. You yourself is given. You are given the freedom to believe any religion you want to believe in or don't exercise any religion at all. That's part of your religious freedom. And in the uh, third part, no religious test shall be required in the exercise of civil or political rights. So meaning a person can always exercise its civil or political rights without undergoing in any religious test. Do you believe in God? Do you, be do you believe in God or do you believe in disbelief from this certain religion? No, you cannot be asked with that kind of or you cannot be required to believe in any of that before you can exercise your civil or political rights. Because again, our government must always be neutral. So it must not support any, uh, any, any, any religion or all religion. Or it must not stop people from be believing in any religion. Because uh, you, um, the government must be neutral at all times. So again, as I mentioned in lesson three, that oh, the matters of the church must be um, must be taken care of by the church, and the matters of the government must be taken care of of the government. So the government cannot enroach the the duties and functions of the church, and at the same time, the church cannot enroach the duties and functions of the government. That's it, there should be separation of the church of state. The, the government must be neutral. And at the same time, uh, people are given the religious freedom. They must be given freedom to believe in whatever they believe in. And in the exercise of their rights, they must not be subjected to any forms of religious tests. Section 6. Section 6 states that the liberty of abode and of changing the same within the limits prescribed by law shall not be impaired except upon lawful order of the court. Neither shall the right to travel be impaired except in the interest of national security, public safety, or public health as may be provided by law. So under this section, in section 6, you are actually free. You have given the freedom to choose where you want to live. Home to maintain your dwelling. At the same time, you are allowed to transfer any residence or your, to transfer in your dwelling except if uh, under, under the limits prescribed by the law. However, once you commit a crime and you are proven to commit a crime, of course, you are not actually allowed to travel. In, in fact, your liberty is um, deprived given you are in And in... And you are not also free to live anywhere because um, there are certain cases where the penalty or the punishment is destiero. And when you say destiero, you're not allowed, when you say uh, if the punishment is actually destiero, you're not actually allowed to stay in a certain place or in a certain municipality. That's actually a form, 
Uh, that's actually a form, a, a form of uh, punishment under our laws. So basically, a person can live wherever he wants to live. He can settle and uh, create a home or build a home in whatever municipality or LGU that he wants along with his family, as long as it is within uh, the bounds and means under the law. And the second part of Section 6 is that you are given the right to travel, so meaning we can always travel. We can travel outside the country, we can travel in any um, tourist spots because it, uh, we have the right to travel. However, it can only be impaired in the interest of national security, public safety, or public health. So with what is happening in our country right now, the COVID, uh, so we were placed in a lockdown. So uh, we were placed in a lockdown, so meaning no one or nobody is allowed to get, uh, to get out and nobody is allowed to travel. So is that uh, permissible under the law? Yes, of course, because there's a pandemic and it is in the interest of public health. So everybody must be protected from getting, um, you know, from this pandemic. So meaning, because it's in the interest of public health, our right to travel can be impaired by our government and it doesn't need a law actually. So in cases but like, uh, of national security, so if ever there are threats, you know, we are being under attack. Or in our public safety, na ipadulong ng mga bagyo, na ipadulong ng mga catastrophe. Our our right to travel can always be impaired during that time because that is to preserve our lives. Uh, that's the purpose of a government, to preserve our lives. In order to preserve our lives, um, they can always impair our right to travel. So again, we have the right to travel. We can go to anywhere we want as long as our travel is um, our, or there uh, or we can travel to anywhere we want as long as um, delicia ma covered uh, in the interest of national security or delicia during um, a panahon sa mga bagyo because of your public safety or your safety is very much important or it's not during the time of pandemic. So limited rakay ang traveling sa mga tao. So again, your right to travel can always be impaired in the interest of national security, public safety, or public health. So other than that, you are free to travel and go anywhere you want. Basta di lang, um, di lang siya makovered in the interest of national security, public safety, and public health. So for Section 7, the right of the people to information on matters of public concern shall be recognized, access to official records and to documents and papers pertaining to official acts, transactions or decisions, as well as to government research data used as basis for policy development shall be afforded to, uh, shall be afforded to the citizens subject to such limitations as me provided by law. So, this is actually our right to information. So we have the right uh, to be informed on all the matters that is happening in our government that is of public concern. So you have always the right to access to official records and documents and papers um, pertaining to official acts, transactions, or decisions, and as well as the government research data. So I think a law has already been, uh, a law has, a law has already been uh, uh, enacted by our government. It's the Freedom uh, Freedom of Information Law. I think that, that has already been uh, uh, made passed into law, and it has granted um, uh, it has granted rights to citizens to access um, any documents or uh, papers in our government um, pertaining to official acts and transactions or decisions. So. Yes, again, we, are, we all have the right to be informed on uh, the matters concerning uh, public, uh, on public concerns uh, uh, on the acts of the government. And also, we also have the right to access information from our government. So this is what this section is pertaining to. 
So Section 8. The Section 8 provides that the right of the people, including those employed in public and private sectors, to form unions, associations, or societies for purposes not contrary to law shall not be abridged. So this is actually pertaining to the rights of our employees um, in both in public and private sectors to form unions or organizations. So I'll be discussing more of that in our uh, labor law uh, discussion I'll, because I'll be discussing, we'll be discussing labor law eventually. So I'll be able to discuss the rights of the employees to form union. So I'll be discussing that there. But then again, under a constitution, once you're an employee, you are free to form unions in order to protect uh, in order for certain reasons, and one of that is to protect your um, your job, protect you from uh, your benefits, from your salary, or anything, um, uh, to provide rights and protections to employees. Some uh, some labor unions have their own purpose, so that's why it's very important that employees must be given the right to form unions in order to protect other rights as vested to them in our labor law. So I'll be discussing more of that under our discussion for labor law. For section 9, we'll be talking, uh, uh, in section 9, it says here, private property shall not be taken for public use without just compensation. So uh, here we are talking about uh, the power of the government to exercise eminent, its power to eminent domain. However, under section 9, it says here that a property shall not be uh, taken for public use without just compensation. So if you remember my discussion in the power of the government to exercise eminent domain, um, there, two, there are two requirements. First, payment of just compensation on the fair market value of the property. The second is that the taking must be for public purpose. So it must be able to serve the people. Uh, the, there must be public purpose as to why a private property has been taken. And when I say public purpose, um, it must be um, provided uh, to help the public. For example, like our municipal health offices, our local government units, and ang mga barangay halls or town halls or municipal halls. Those kinds of things, those are used for public purpose. So again, this is in the exercise of the power of eminent domain. And the, in order for the government to properly exercise the power of eminent domain, there must be a just payment of just compensation. At the same time, uh, uh, it is must be it is must be for public use. For section 10, it says no law impairing the obligation of contract shall be passed. So we'll be discussing more of it and uh, when we reach our discussion on civil law because I have also provided that under uh, this class. So you have to understand first that a contract is a meeting of minds between two parties. And upon meeting of minds of these two parties, obligation would always be arise because this is the form of uh, this is the purpose of the contractor an obligation is um, to do or not to do or to give or not to give to give or not to give so basically there are always obligations that would arise from contracts and the thing is the government under this section section 10 the government is not allowed to create laws or to pass laws that would change these obligations as presented in their contracts. So the law cannot create, uh, the, the government cannot create a law that would change the manner or the terms in these contracts or in these obligations or that would change the subject of these obligations. So basically, dili pwede makahilabot ang atong uh, government on the contracts being entered into by the people. So no law shall be uh, created in order to impair the obligations of contracts. So muna, again, we'll be discussing more of it once we reach, um, we will be discussing more about obligations and more about contracts once we reach um, our lesson for civil law. For Section 11, it provides that free access to the courts and quasi-judicial bodies and adequate legal assistance shall not be denied to any person by reason of poverty. Again, under this right, 
uh, poor people who are considered as or who are recognized as indigent litigants under our courts have free access to our courts and quasi-judicial bodies. So there are already um, a lot of laws that has already been implemented that would uh, provide services to our indigent litigants. And in fact, um, they, uh, their um, legal dues are already waived under our law. And we have the public, if um, these indigent litigants need lawyers, then we have the public attorney's office that would provide um, free legal services to them. And there are also um, certain associations like the, the IBP that would, uh, and the Integrated Bar of the Philippines that would also provide free, um, free legal assistance to indigent litigants. So again, uh, you cannot use uh, poverty or you cannot use uh, by reason of poverty you cannot use that as a you cannot use poverty as a reason for you to not be able to access our courts or other quasi-judicial bodies for you to implement your rights or your obligations because we have laws that would uh, help you and in fact you argue you have the right to access um, our courts and quasi-judicial bodies for free. So again, you cannot use um, your you cannot use your uh, you cannot use poverty as a reason for you to not be able to access our courts and enforce your rights. So section twelve, we have uh, this is quite long, so just bear with me. Under section twelve, it states number one, any person under an investigation for the commission of an offense shall have the right to be informed of his right to remain silent and to have competent and independent counsel, preferably of his own choice. If the person cannot afford the services of counsel, he must be provided with one, and these rights cannot be waived except in writing and in the presence of counsel. No torture, force, violence violence, threat, limitation, or any other means which vitiate the free will shall be used against him. Secret detention places, solitary incommunicado, or other similar forms of detention are prohibited. To continue, we have any confession or admission obtained in the violation of section 17 shall be admissible evidence against him and the law shall provide for penal and civil sanctions for violations of this section as well as compensation to and rehabilitation of victims of torture or similar practices in their families. So under um, section 12 of our Bill of Rights, it has provided that once a person has been um, a person has been held already in investigation or has been accused of a crime and has already been in, under investigation by our police, he has been given several rights. First, his right is to um, remain silent. And the second is he has the right to have a competent and independent counsel, preferably of his own choice. So basically, this is actually part of the Miranda rights. So we have, we call it Miranda rule or Miranda rights. So every time a person, in fact, it's very important when the person is being held under arrest, his rights, this, this Miranda rights shall be read to him. And it is important to note that these rights provided for under Section 12 cannot be waived. The only um, rights under Section 12 that can be waived is your right to be remain silent and the right to a competent and independent counsel. But then again, upon waiver of these rights, um, upon waiver of these rights, um, the waiver must be in writing and must be in front of a counsel. So there must be counsel in front of the accused and he, sh he shall write his waiver to his right to a counsel. But other than that, he has the right to be protected from any torture, force, violence, threat, or limitation, or any other means which vitiates his free will. So, dili dapat, once a person is under investigation by the police, di siya dapat pugson nga mo solte. Basically, when you are under investigation by the police and kwaon ka sa police for investigation, so you have the right to remain silent and you have the right to 
the council, but you can always waive the right. However, imong right nga dili ka nila i-torture just because paaminon ra kanila or pakoon kanila for a certain crime yet you haven't committed at all or to admit any form of guilt on a crime that has been committed, they are not allowed to do so. Again, they are not allowed to use force, limitation, threats, or violence against you once you commit or once you are under uh, custody by the police or once you are under investigation by the police, they can pede gamitan of any forms of threats, violence or threats or any forms of torture just for you to admit guilt. Because again, we have the courts to do that. The police are just there to detain you and for you to um, and to detain you and to prevent you from escaping your liabilities under the law. But other than that, it's the court that would um, say if you are guilty or not. So basically, if once you are under investigation, they are not allowed to torture you or to force you or to threat you in order to admit guilt. So that's basically under uh, Section 12 of our Bill of Rights. So that's why Gibutang diri any confession or admission obtained in violation of this section or Section 17 shall be admissible in evidence against him. So again, so just because you are tortured and you say, napugustra ka, kaya torture ka, or you force ka, then your admission cannot be used under courts. It is inadmissible as presented as or as um, expressed in uh, number three of section 12. And again, uh, the law shall provide for penal and civil sanctions for violations of this section. So basically, dapat good, there must be punishment for those who will torture you or those who will force you to uh, admit any guilt or to admit guilt in committing any crime. So you are very much protected under the law. Again, once you are accused of committing a crime, you have the right to remain silent in La Puxon At the same time, you have a right to be to have uh, uh, an independent or incompetent counsel. At the same time, you have the right to be protected from any forms of torture, violence, threat, or intimidation. That is your right. So section, th section 13, let me read all persons except those charged with offenses punishable by reclusion perpetua when evidence is, of guilt is so is strong shall before conviction be bailable by sufficient sureties or be released on recognizance as may be provided by law. The right to bail shall not be impaired even when the privilege of writ of habeas corpus is suspended. Excessive bail shall not be required. So this is actually your right to bail. So basically, once you are an accused and you are already um, you are already under detention, you are already arrested, or you are under restraint by officers, you can always claim your right to bail because um, that is uh, freely given to you under Section 13 of the Philippine Constitution. So you have the right to bail once you are arrested, detained, or your liberty has been restrained by police officers. You can claim this right, and this right can only be taken away. Your right to bail can only be taken away once there is already a judgment or you have already been judged with a uh, charged with a punishment after a judgment under our court. So basically, if you by court judgment, you can free, uh, you are free to do so. However, the thing is, you have to understand in this right to bail, it doesn't mean you are already a free person once you are granted the right to bail, because a right to bail is just a security for you not to not to escape uh, criminal prosecution because your right to bail will only apply to criminal uh, offenses or those offenses under the revised penal code. And in this right, the right to bail, this is just a security. Mubayad ka or there's a person who under recognized so some uh, uh, kapitan ba na or barangay kagawad ng ilhon ka as this, uh, as this person. And, you know, bail is just a security to the courts para dili ka escape dili ka ikyas, or for you to not escape criminal liability so even if you are uh, given the right to bail you are still not free because you must attend all proceedings under your 
on your trial, you must be present in your trials. At the same time, it does not give you the right to evade uh, criminal persecution. So basically, you have the right to bail. However, your bail must, um, uh, your bail, in, in your bail, it is not absolute given that it is just a security for you to not uh, pursue, to not escape uh, your criminal, uh, the persecution uh, of the prosecution, do not escape the prosecution of the crime that you have committed just in case uh, you are judged by the court as guilty of the crime. And the thing is, you're right, uh, um, in capital offenses or in offenses, um, uh, where the punishment is reclusion perpetua, and there is the evidence, nagi evidence of guilt is strong, you actually lost your right to bail. Wala na siya right to bail. Capital offenses, capital offenses, or those uh, major crimes with, uh, with reclusion perpetua, as the punishment, and at the same time, there must be an evidence uh, the evidence of guilt is so strong, then that makes your um, that makes your case non bailable So di ka bail. So again, you have the right to bail. However, in certain cases when uh, the offense is punishable by reclusion perpetua, and second requisite is that the evidence of guilt is strong, you are not allowed. To, uh, you do not have the right to bail in those cases. So again, in cases or, or in offenses where it is punishable by reclusion perpetua and the second requisite is that the evidence of guilt is strong, then that case is non-bailable. So you cannot um, invoke your right to bail in this case. So in other, any other cases like light offenses, you have the right to bail but in offenses where it is um uh, in offenses where it is punishable by reclusion perpetua and the and the evidence of guilt is so strong you cannot actually invoke your right to bail so for section 14 it states that no person shall be held to answer for a criminal offense without due process of law, and in all criminal prosecutions, the accused shall be presumed innocent until the contrary is proved, and shall enjoy the right to be heard by himself and counsel, to be informed of the nature and the cause of accusation against him, to have a speedy, impartial, and public trial, to meet the witness face to face, and to have a compulsory process to secure the attendance of witnesses and the production of evidence in this behalf. However, after arraignment, trial may proceed notwithstanding the absence of the accused provided that he has been duly notified and his failure to appear is justified. So first, we have to consider that um, an accused has several rights under Section 14. First, he shall be presumed innocent at Till the contrary is proved. So meaning, under our laws, all those people who have been accused of a crime are presumed to be innocent. Innocent sa sila until uh, the contrary is proved. So meaning, they are found to be guilty of committing a crime. And under our laws, for you to be considered as guilty in committing a crime, you must be guilty without a reasonable doubt. So meaning, pala on, dapat mo wala anta ng doubts against this person through evidence and the testimony of the witnesses. So, guilt, so your guilt beyond reasonable doubt uh, is um, in, uh, in cases where there's guilt beyond reasonable doubt, that's the only time that you, your innocence shall uh, shall be proved to the contrary. So basically, di na considered as innocent and then you will be charged for any punishment on the charges against you. So again, once you are accused of a crime and without hearing Pagani, so again, we will talk here about due process and it's very important, most especially in criminal cases, there must be due process under with judicial proceedings because we're talking here on deprivation of your liberty, of your freedom. And the thing is, once you are accused of a crime, you are actually, you can be detained by our police officers and you lost your right to liberty. So there must be a process in order for you, once you are accused, in order for you to really be charged and to be punished by those um, 
to be punished by uh, uh, under our laws for you to be punished under our laws there you must be heard first and if ever it is proven that you are guilty beyond reasonable doubt that's the only time that you will receive your punishment however first you are still um First, you are still presumed innocent. So in every case of your trial, you are still presumed to be innocent. All accused are presumed to be innocent. Then the second right under section 14 is the accused shall enjoy the right to be heard by himself and counsel. Again, na, uh, you have the right to, to be with the counsel or uh, yeah, you have the right to be with a counsel and you have the right to be heard. So meaning, you are able to present your side. Your, you are able to present your own witnesses. You are given the right to present your own witnesses. You are given the right to present your own evidence, and you have the right to be heard. So basically, kaniyang sila dapat your your presentation of your witnesses and your presentation of your evidence must be accepted in our courts and along uh, and once upon your hearing, dapat you must personally attend it or with you and your counsel must be able to attend your hearing. And you must be informed, another right and granted under section 14 is that you must be informed of the nature and the cause of the accusation against you. So meaning, dapat kabalo ka, unsa kaso sa imuha, unsa maning kaso. So they, it must be explained to you in a language known to you, unsa maning kasuha, what is the nature and the cause of this accusation against you. So again, this must be explained. Dapat once under you are accused of a crime, the, those and the courts have uh, the obligation to explain to you unsa mani hanong na hanong uh, presuhod man ka hanong unsa may accusation ang gi accuse against you so this must be explained to you once you're accused of a crime and again number 4 another right granted under section 14 is that to have a CBT impartial and public trial so meaning Dapat ang imong trial must be within reasonable time. Dapat paspas kay the thing is some offenses ang ilang punishment is only for a year. Pero na preso ka for more than five years na already. That's very unreasonable, di ba? So dapat speedy imong trial. Dapat uh, speedy siya, reasonable. It must be within a reasonable time. And in that time, within that reasonable time, dapat nagrant na po ang or dapat uh, all evidence needed by both parties must be gathered and although and the witnesses also must be presented within that reasonable time so basically it's very vague an timely speedy disposition of cases that's a very vague um that's a very big vague, vague concept libog siya concept or taka siya open siya for multiple um multiple um multiple explanation but the thing is um uh, again, reasonable. Dapat reasonable ang time. Reasonable ang time nga maka-collect of the uh, additional evidences. At the same time, uh, reasonable ang time nga maka maka kuan ka sa witnesses. So within that reasonable time, all evidence must be gathered. All witnesses must be able to speak. And if and it's only through that that it's only through that that uh, you um, the uh, you be able to enjoy your right to a speedy and impartial and public trial. So when say impartial, so meaning the courts, ang um, walay walay ang courts and public trials. So everyone must have access to your trial. So di siya dapat tagu andra, dapat everyone can have access to your trial. And on the next, the next, um, the next right granted in section 14 is that you have the right to meet the witnesses face to face. That's why under your trial. Um, there must be the, uh, another litigation on the witnesses must be able to, to be questioned by your uh, the witnesses must be able to be questioned by your counsel na siya um, no ma makuan siya ma undergo mo process nga masulti ang witnesses because it's very important because the thing is planted witnesses so that's why you must know uh, it's very important 
to know the integrity of your witness. So for you to know the integrity of your witness, you must be able to meet the witness face to face. And in fact, you can ask the court nga i the list ang koan ang ang some of your witnesses because they are not credible. So again, credible witnesses are very much important. So that's why you have under section 14, you are given the right to meet your witnesses. So for section 15, the privilege of the writ of habeas corpus shall not be suspended except in cases of invasion or rebellion when the public safety requires it. So basically, it's more related to uh, cases of illegal detention or when you're, you are deprived of your liberty, um, liberty illegally because um, under this law, uh, the writ of habeas corpus is actually a writ or order from the courts um, directing a person who has detained another. So basically, ikaw, you have been detained or your liberty has been illegally been deprived by another person, the court will actually uh, or, or release a writ or order to that person to release you or to release the body of, uh, of the prisoner for a certain time for a place and date. So, dapat mapakita ka, dapat ma-release ka on that certain time and date as provided for the writ of habeas corpus. And the thing is, um, it extends to um, uh, the, the extent it shall be it shall extend to all cases of illegal confinement and or detention by which any person is deprived of his liberty or by which the rightful custody of any person is withheld from the person entitled to. So basically, katon is mga cases on in cases of uh, illegal deprivation or kanang sa mga parents ganing custody and, um uh, kanang magbulag ang mga parents and then kinsa ina custody sa children so kinsa mapuntahan ani ka custody sa mother ba or from father and the thing is gikuha sa father ang baby although ang custody is provided to the mother a writ of habeas corpus can always be used against the father to produce the baby so para makuha siya or in, this is on cases of illegal detention. The thing is, katong mga tao nga gipresor ag kalit without any warrant of arrest or any accusations at all, pwede ni siya. And the thing is, this has been a use during martial law. Sa martial law, pwede na kadaktom, dakpon anytime without any warrant. So, dili makover ang re, um, um, the, uh, the suspension of writ of habeas corpus. So, basically, the only time that the habeas corpus can be suspended is when there is invasion or rebellion. So in cases of rebellion or invasion and when public safety requires it. So if there's a case of invasion and public safety requires it, then the writ of habeas corpus will be suspended. Or also in cases of rebellion and when public safety requires it, then the privilege of the writ of habeas corpus shall be suspended. That's the only time. So basically, um, it happens during martial law. So during martial law, pwede na kadakpon anytime by our, by our police officers and it cannot be questioned. So basically, because there is suspension of habeas corpus at that time. So basically, because of that, dili ka pwede ma-release even if magpagawas ka grit of habeas corpus, dili ka magpagawas under legal detention. So again, Section 15 is actually provided as a right for those who are victims of illegal detention or in cases when there is deprivation of your liberty. So that's when your the privilege um, again the prior privilege to the privilege to the writ of habeas corpus shall not be suspended unless the cases of invasion when public safety requires it or in cases of rebellion and public safety requires it. That is for section 15. For section 16, it says all persons shall have the right to speedy disposition of their cases before all judicial, quasi-judicial, judicial or administrative cases. So basically, under section 16, it's quite similar to section 14 katong um, speedy disposition of cases. However, for section 14, it only refers to criminal cases, criminal ratong cases. Under section 16, it refers to all cases 
there must be uh, in all cases under the judicial, quasi-judicial, or administrative bodies, there must be speedy disposition. And when you say speedy disposition, it's actually very relative. speedy However, in all cases, in all proceedings, delays must not be unreasonable. So meaning, namoy uban. For example, ilang to yun nga madugay ang case kay hulaton nilang. For example, again, case of civil law, case of the law, something like that. Na yung uban, yung mga cases, nga dugay na kaayo, namatay na lang yung mga parties, lain, lain ay nagdala. And wala gap po na human. And that is because, and there are unreasonable, reasonable delays. Rason lang sila, wala sila na sila atuan, aning adlaw during the hearing, na atuan sa di mato sa lawyer. So, reset na po for another schedule sa mga another schedule for hearing and that is not good actually and you know that and because of that magklag na ato mga courts daghan na kaayog mga unfinished uh, cases in our courts and because of that wala disposition disposition of justice is hampered so meaning Wala'y husti siyang madawat ang atong mga tao once they go to the courts. If all the time, na ay unreasonable delays sa atong courts. So that, but that's why it's very important na speedy ang disposition sa atong mga cases. Dio, dapat within reasonable time, ma-present ang tanang evidence available and ma-present ang tanang witnesses. Mugina, that's very important. Ma-present ang Present ang witnesses, and present ang all witnesses within reasonable time. So dapat and every time a reset ni ang ato or makansel ni mga hearings, dapat there's a there's a reason for it and kaning reason acceptable for all. Dili kay ingon lang ay nakoy party or kasal na ako man ko pa. That's very unreasonable at all. So dapat upon um dapat setting on the time of your hearing, dapat. Na you ka present good ka and your counsel must be present because again, walay gusti siyang madawat ang mga tao if at all times there are unreasonable delays in your hearing. So that's why in all um, litigations before judicial, quasi judicial, and administrative bodies, people uh, must uh, uh, there must be speedy and uh, there must be speedy disposition of cases so that justice would be really administered in all cases. For section 17, it says no person shall be compelled to be a witness against himself. So you have to remember in section 12, we were able to mention that no, there should uh, a person should not be tortured or should not be used force or forms or any forms of violence or death or imitation for him to admit his guilt. And same with section 17, no person shall be compelled to be a witness against himself. So meaning, dili ka dapat pugson nga mo admit o guilt nga makapapwison ni mo. So meaning, you must not be coerced in admitting guilt and you must not, you must not be uh, compelled to be a witness against yourself. So under our laws, you must be protected once you are accused of any crime or any other, or not only in criminal cases. In uh, section 17, is that it does not apply also. Does not it does not apply only to criminal cases, but also in civil cases or other cases. Because you can to become a witness against yourself. So ikaw kagaling on your own words, it will not should not be used against you. So meaning, di ka dapat pugson with the use of threat, violence, or any forms of torture. Di na pwede magamit against you for you to become a witness against yourself. So you must be protected protected from uh, being coerced and with uh, in being coerced in admitting any form of guilt or any form uh, or in admitting any form of guilt or any acts that you have not committed at all. So again, you must be protected from it and under section 12 in relation to section 17, any um, any confession or admission that has been obtained through um, through coercion or through threats or any forms of violence as mentioned in section 12, 1 and section 17 shall not be used against you under our court. So again, be katapat mapugos to become a witness against yourself. 
Section 18, it says no person shall be detained solely by reason of his political beliefs and aspirations. At the same time, no involuntary servitude in any form shall exist except as a punishment for a crime whereof the party shall have been duly convicted. So let's start with Section 18. Under Section 18, no person shall be detained solely uh, by reason of his political beliefs and aspirations. So meaning, just because you believe in something, just because you have your own political belief, your political belief is different from the political belief of the current administration, you cannot be detained by it for it. So meaning, you are free to believe in whatever form of government you want to believe. You can believe in whatever um, political beliefs and, and on how this, you can believe on how this government should be run and you are expressed to do so uh, you are uh, you can feel expressed to do so and you shall not be detained by reason for it so meaning just because you are believing in you do just because you not you do not believe in the in 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 our government just because you believe in other forms of government or in the ideas or ideology of some political philosophers, you're, you, you are not, um, you must not be detained for it. So meaning, under our government, you are freely um, given, you are given the freedom to believe, uh, to believe in any for, uh, in whatever political beliefs you believe in. So even if your belief is against the government, as long as you're not hurting anybody, then you are free to do so and you cannot be uh, detained or decamapi so just for it. So again, you have you are you are given the freedom to believe in anything or in any political beliefs. You are given the freedom to believe in any political beliefs and you are not you cannot be detained or so just for your political beliefs and aspirations. However, if your, however, the thing is, if your if beliefs and you are expressing the, the, these beliefs and it's and it actually is um, already a form of already committing a crime because you're calling for a rebellion already, or yeah, you're calling for a rebellion or. Uh, or or your beliefs are is already considered a threat against the government, then that's the time that you can be convicted. However, if your belief is just uh, is on the op opposing side of the government and it does not hurt any person at all and it does not uh, impose threat to other person, then you are free to do so. You cannot be detained or take a penal prison for it. But if it uh, causes not um, other, if it uh, it commits na other form of crimes or you know it causes threat na your beliefs then that's the time that you can be uh peso. Okay. So let's proceed to number two in section eighteen it says here no involuntary servitude in any form should exist except as a punishment for a crime whereof a party shall have been truly convicted. So what do you mean involuntary servitude? Dili ka pwede pugson mo trabaho. Involuntary servitude, service. Dili ka pwede pugson to do something that you do not like or against your will. Dili ka pwede pugson. Like for example, under school. Skwilahan. Dili ka pwede, you know, dili ka pwede pugson niya. <laughs> Yung magpainit stong ha. <laughs> or dili ka pwede pugson to do something that is against your will. What if you dinu kaganahan mo skwela di ka pwede pugsod ana you are allowed to stop studying anytime you want di ka pwede mapugos ana sa atong government however if it's already a form of crime you have committed a crime and it's already a form of government uh, of punishment like for example ipasulod ka ka mga agricultural di uh, namay ka ng mga prisohan nga for agriculture so ato kay pagunahon ka sigi or pagbuhaton ka aning mga butang then you are required to do so because um, as mentioned in section 18 involuntary servitude is permissible if it's already a punishment for a crime and whereof the party has already been convicted so meaning nanay trial and you have been found guilty of the case and you are already serving um, the punishment for a crime then involuntary servitude is permissible however 
in schools, kundi iso ganahan mong guna, then don't. <laughs> o alay, um, you are not, you are free to do so. Again, dili ka pwede pugson to do things that you do not like under this. So, uh, no, you are not forced to work for another, dili ka pwede uh, mapugos to work for another or to do things against your will under this section under 18. So, again, no involuntary servitude is allowed except, again, if it's already a punishment for a crime that you have been convicted to. Section 19, it states, excessive fines shall not be imposed nor cruel, degrading or inhuman punishment inflicted, neither shall death penalty be imposed unless for compelling reasons involving heinous crimes. The Congress hereafter provides for it any death penalty already imposed shall be reduced to reclusion perpetua. Then the, it says that the employment of physical, psychological or degrading punishment against any prisoner or detainee or the use of substantial inadequate penal, penal facilities under subhuman conditions shall be dealt with by law. So for section 19 and number one, it provides for number first, excessive fines, and second, um, for degrading or inhuman punishment. So when you say excessive fines, meaning disproportionate siya from, you, are, you have been given, uh, you are requested to pay fines for a certain crime, and that is just, disproportionate to the nature of the crime that you have committed. For example, you have been accused of theft and ang imong gikawat is only worth 5,000 pesos but then again you are requested to pay 1 million pesos worth of fine and that's very excessive and it's very disproportionate to the to the nature of the crime that you have committed, then that's is already considered excessive fine and that's not allowed under Section 19. And also in degrading or inhuman punishment, it is not allowed to inflict degrading or inhuman punishment. So again, karo sa kamusutian na in degrading or inhuman na siya when the punishment is already disproportionate to the this, when the punishment is already disproportionate to the nature of the crime that you have committed, and at the same time, if it's if if the punishment already involves um, torture or death, lingering death to the if it already involves torture or ling lingering death to the pasakit yun say lingering death or torture kaya pasakit na ugmayo bun ugon kagmayo then that's already um, considered as degrading or inhuman punishment or kanang hubuan ka kanang pahubuan ka in public that's degrading that's actually a form of degrading punishment so that's not allowed so you are protected from that kind of punishment under section 19 and also this is actually very interesting in section 19 it talks about death penalty currently death penalty is suspended Again, it's suspended. Wala giwala, but it's currently suspended our under our laws. And the thing is, here in here in our constitution, neither death it states here that neither death penalty shall be imposed unless for compelling reasons involving heinous, heinous crimes. Meaning, heinous crimes tong grab na yung murder na ba? Murder na you have killed another person, ng rape ka with murder, those kinds of things. Under this, you are actually death penalty is actually allowed as a punishment for these kinds of crimes. However, it has to be provided that there must be a law punishing death penalty for it. Unless kung wala, then death penalty is not allowed. And on, on only in circumstances, I only in cases where it involves heinous crimes. Again, if it is not a heinous crime, wala yung patay, wala yung rape, then under our constitution, death penalty cannot be used as a punishment for it. So again, it's only in heinous crimes and it's only when it is provided by our Congress. But currently, death penalty has been suspended. So all those that has been, um, all those uh, cases that has been uh, 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 the Manai punishment of death penalty, um, it has been reduced to reclusion perpetua. So that's it. 
So again, number two, it says that the employment of physical, psychological, or degrading punishment against any person or detainees or the use of substandard or inadequate penal facilities under subhuman conditions shall be dealt with by law. So basically, katong mga police officers or BGMP, you know, that would employ physical, psychological, or degrading punishment, like for example, so no good ng tao sa tubangan sa other tao, pakaulawan sa public plaza, like pahubuon or patuyok-tuyokon, wearing katong patuyok-tuyokon, then magdalag placard, nga, wag tularan, mag nanakaw ako, those kinds of things. Um, those who are, uh, those who will commit against, uh, who will those who will commit those kinds of, katong impose o ang klaseng uh, punishment, under section 19, they must be dealt with by law. So meaning, dapat they must be punished for those things. So for section 20, it says here that no person shall be imprisoned for debt or non-payment of a poll tax. So basically, this is actually very interesting. Debt, so meaning utang. Ah, manghulam ka kwarta sa imong silingan, mga classmates or amiga, and then bayran. You cannot be imprisoned for it actually. Dili ka mapisoan. However, in cases nga estafa is involved, in say estafa, um, there is already fraud involved. Like for example, mo bayad kuno kay kag utang, pero yung bayad is checky is what they sold, it's a bouncing check. You can be prosecuted for it. So basically, you have to consider. Na in any form of utang, wala yung napisot mo sa utang. However, if fraud is already involved, it's the fraud. It's not the non-payment of that, but rather it's the fraud that is already being punished under our law. So basically, pangulang bra, kung di ka bayad, di ka pwede pisohon. However, is a pagpangutang ni mo, it already involves fraud, then ka na. Pwede na ka mapiso under our laws. And for the second part, non-payment of a poll tax, you cannot be in prison for the non-payment of a poll tax. Well, di na siya ka mapiso for non-payment of poll tax because non-poll tax is not being implemented right now in our government. So, sa Pilipinas, wala na gabayad of poll tax. So, basically, if you don't, you're not able to pay poll tax, ika pwede mapiso. Pero again, in this section, it's very important to note na wala na piso tungkol sa utang. But, it's already your a personal obligation, you have the obligation to pay tax your debts and it's already under your conscience. But under our laws, walay na bayad for non-payment of debts, but rather na piso tungod kay na fraud involved sa iyong pagpangutang. But if utang ra, kasi simple lang utang sa iyong mga classmates or friends, hindi ka pwede mapiso ana. So for section 21, it says that no person shall be twice put in jeopardy in punishment for the same offense if an act is punished by a law and an ordinance, conviction, or acquittal under either shall constitute a bar to another prosecution of the same act. So we have to consider, in this case, it's, it talks about double jeopardy. And when we talk about double jeopardy, it involves that a person has been convicted of a crime and uh, and upon his conviction the crime has been dismissed and the dismissal of the case is without the express consent of the accused and the, and the dismissal was actually from a court of competent jurisdiction so basically once this happens a person has already been dismissed from the case. The case against him is already been dismissed. So, if ever the, the opposing party will file a case involving the same subject matter, the same set of evidence, the same set of facts, then the prox, uh, prosecution will be barred because under our laws, no person shall be prosecuted for the same offense twice. And why is that so? Because magbalik balik never-ending litigation. Unsa man na deprivation of justice na po na matabo. Kay, nakuman na sa kaso ani, na dismiss na, kasuhan na po na magbalik. Yeah, the same grounds pag yun. The same, same set of facts na gabalik balik raw. That's um, too malicious na already. 
So because of that, uh, there's double prosecution, there's double jeopardy, and dili mahuman ang litigation under our courts if that will always happen. So that is why it's very important that once a, 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 an accused has been dismissed of the crime, of a crime, and the dismissal um, was without his express consent, and that it was um, promulgated by a court of competent jurisdiction, then basically he cannot be prosecuted for, prosecuted for another crime of involving the same set of facts, the same evidence. Again, double jeopardy is not allowed under our laws as provided for in Section 21 of our Bill of Rights. So under Section 22, it says no ex post facto law or bill of attainder shall be enacted. So we have to remember that, again, um, laws must not have any retroactive effect. So unsa man na tabuana? Basically, you committed a certain act, ano nga mga panahon na. And the thing is, that act that you have committed is not considered a criminal act yet. Again, we have to consider that it is not a crime if there is no law punishing it. Uh, there is no law punishing it. Again, there's a legal maxim that says it is not a crime if there is no law punishing it. So basically, you have committed that an, an act which is not yet a criminal act. However, after several years, the, our government was able to pass a law that would uh, punish that certain, that would criminalize that certain act that you have committed. The thing is, once that law has been passed, the law cannot have retroactive application and would make you or that that uh, that would make you liable for that crime that you have committed, because at that time you have committed that such an act, there was still no law punishing it. So basically, you must be protected from any. Uh, retroactive application of any laws. So, dili pa atras, everything must move forward. So, basically, if there's, a, if there's a new law that will punish a certain act, it would criminalize a certain act, those acts that were committed before the application of that law or before that law took effect are not punishable. However, after the law has took effect, that's the only time that they can be punished. So, again, so, bisaya pa, nakagibuhat nga butang, nakagibuhat nga act, and during that time, nabuhat na ni mo, wala pa yung law nga mo punish ana. However, after certain years, nagipas ang law, nagipas nga law ang atong government, that would punish that certain act. But the thing is, the, upon application of that law, di siya dapat mo atras nga mo punish ang those who committed those acts before the application of the law. Kay dili man pwede mo atras ang application sa atong law. Everything must move forward. Progressive siya. Uh, prospective siya. Prospective. So, tanan nga retroactive uh, application of our law should, should, uh, is not allowed under our constitution. So, basically, that's why it's mentioned that no ex post facto law shall be enacted. So, meaning, walay law nga mo punished of an act that has been committed before the application of that law is allowed under our courts. And also, a bill of attainder is not allowed. When you say bill of attainder, this is actually laws that would uh, prosecute criminal acts without hearing or without trial. So, the it should prosecute even if uh, well, I due process, that's called a bill of attainder and it's not also allowed under section 22. So, again, what is not allowed under section 22 are the ex post facto law or bill of attainder. So, di na siya pede. So, that actually ends our discussion for lesson 4. So, I thank you so much for listening. Again, we were able to discuss about uh, social justice and the Bill of Rights. So, just for your information, the Bill of Rights actually is very complicated. It involves very complicated jurisprudence and there are certain um, uh, certain concepts that are related to it that are also very complicated and very deep. So, let's just leave that to our law students and our lawyers. Uh, but for you as law, as uh, education students, um, it's just, it's very important that you will have a 
basic knowledge or basic understanding on our Bill of Rights. So there's no reason for you to dig deeper. However, if you want to, if you want to understand more about our Bill of Rights and know uh, those other concepts involved in our Bill of Rights that are very complicated, you can always comment down below, ask questions, you can always PM me or send me an email. I would gladly answer your questions again. If you want to understand more, if you want to learn more, ask me questions and I will definitely answer them and I will definitely help you because it's my um, basic mission to also let you understand about these different laws because again, our laws are too complicated and what I'm trying to do here in our subject is just to provide you a basic, to provide basic understanding and overview, to give you an overview of our laws here in the Philippines and to give you basic understanding as to how these laws can be applied to our daily lives. So again, ask questions, okay? So that ends our lesson four and that ends my discussion for our module two. So after this, you will be having your midterm examination. And as I mentioned, your midterm examination is time pressured. So I hope that you are able to study all those important things and concepts under our uh, under our uh, lesson two and uh, uh, lesson two, <laughs> lesson three and lesson four. So again, your module two, please study your module two and then um, take the notes in all of my discussions because all the questions in my exams that I have given to you, um, I have discussed them in my lectures from lesson one to lesson four until now. So I don't want you to fail, but rather I want you to understand. So for me to know that you have understand all my discussion and all my lecture, you have to perform well in your examination. So in fact, you don't need to research more anymore in your examinations because again, you can take down notes from my discussion and you can actually quote me <laughs> in your answers if you want to but you know so just just study very well and if you again if you have any questions ask me so thank you so much for taking time i hope you are all doing well and i'm praying for all of you again stay safe stay at home and drink lots and lots of water again drink lots and lots of water thank you good night have a, good night have a nice day